Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a low poly or geometric background. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And as I mentioned, you can get more by becoming a premium member. Right now, I have 15% off my premium membership through the end of 2020. Depending on when you see this, it might be too late. But type in code 15OFF2020 at checkout for 15% off your annual membership. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here in my composition, I have a few examples over in my layers panel of the technique we're going to be working with today. So if I unhide these layers, you could see some examples of the low poly design. Each one of these has a different layer mode on it. So each one has a slightly different effect. And I can also come over here and hide this gradient layer and you can see what this looks like with a different background color. So this is just a plain white background color below. Definitely looks better with the gradient. But I'll start off with this technique by going to File, New. And I went with a pretty small image size here because this does use a filter that is a little bit on the slow side. So by working with a smaller composition, we're helping to sort of mitigate that. So I'll click OK. So next we're gonna come over and create a new layer. And this layer is going to be the layer where we create our low poly design. So I'm just gonna name this Geo, that's what I've been calling it. And come over and click OK. So here we have our new blank layer. Now what I want to do is fill this in with the color I want to use. And keep in mind that basically, let me come back here to my original composition. The color that we choose is going to end up showing up inside of the final shape design here. So let me change the mode back to normal. So because I went with that bluish color, now we have shades of blue in these geometric shapes we're creating or these low poly shapes. So whatever color, generally speaking, you want these shapes to be, that's the color you're gonna to wanna to use over here on your layer. So I'm gonna go with the blue layer. We can go with a gradient color as well if we wanna switch it up a bit, but I'm just gonna go with a solid color for now. And now I'm gonna hit the forward slash key on my keyboard. You can also go to help, search and run a command. And now I'm gonna type in mosaic. That's going to be the filter we're using here. So I'll double click on here. Once again, this was brought to my attention by a subscriber. So thank you for bringing this technique to my attention. But this filter by default is supposed to make your composition look like a tiled mosaic. But we can actually use this to create our low poly or geometric background design. Right now, by default, the tile geometry is set to hexagons. I'm gonna change this over to triangles. You can go with any shape you want. You'll see you also have squares and octagons on here. Let's just go with triangles. So the first slider allows us to change the actual size here of the little tiles. So I want the size of this to be much larger. So I'll just click and drag this up and you can see that the filter is a little bit on the slow side. The next slider is the tile height. This basically allows you to make the tiles look like they're a bit raised or a bit 3D. So you can increase this value if you want these to look more 3D or more raised. I tend to decrease this value to make them look more flat. The next slider is tile neatness. So this is basically whether or not your tiles are gonna look somewhat random and warped. As you can see here, the triangles are sort of wavy looking. Let me move this out the way. So the triangles are sort of wavy and they're all different sizes. If I were to turn the tile neatness all the way up to one, that would make all of the triangles the same exact size. So now they're nice and orderly. This is a good way to easily create a shape pattern. Or if I want these to be totally random, I can turn the tile neatness all the way down to zero. This looks better with the triangles in my opinion as you use some of the other shapes, it doesn't really look as good. But for the triangles technique, I really like having the tile neatness turned all the way down. Tile color variation allows you to choose how much variation there is between all of the tiles. So right now this value is pretty low, which means there's only a few tiles that are darker and a few that are lighter, and then the rest are all this sort of middle blue color. 
So if I were to increase the color variation here, you'll see there are gonna be more tiles that have different colors. So there's more light and dark colors on top of the already sort of uh, middle blue color there. Color averaging has to do with when you are using an actual photo. So in this case, it's not really going to apply Rough tile surface is just gonna add a bit of texture to these. I'm not gonna check that. Again, just cause this filter is a bit slow and allow splitting tiles also has to do with when you're using an actual image. Tile spacing is of course the space between the tiles. Right now there is a bit too much for my taste. So I'm gonna turn the tile spacing all the way down to zero. Keep in mind that with this filter, because it's not perfect, there will still be a bit of a spacing between all the tiles here. That's sort of one of the issues with this filter. It does leave a bit of a gap. And I was asked if I had any advice for helping to get rid of this gap. There's not really a way that I found to get rid of the gap between the tiles. However, I have found that it does look a bit better when you do purposely keep a line in between all of the tiles known as a joint and no, not the kind you smoke. But the next option here is for the spacing, so the joints color. Right now this is set to black, so if I click on this, I can change it. This is one way to sort of mitigate how noticeable the little spaces between the various shapes. What I tend to do is set this to my original color, and you can see here, it doesn't completely go away by any means, but it does look more like it fits in here with the composition. And there is an alpha slider here, so if you slide this all the way down, the line will disappear. But as you can see, all it does is reveal the layer below. And in some cases, that can make the lines stand out a bit more, the gaps stand out a bit more. I don't think this looks bad necessarily, but it may not be the effect you're going for. So if you want something more subtle, you can always turn the alpha back up, and that's what I recommend. So the light color is going to have to do with the artificial light that is shining on this. So sort of the way the mosaic filter works is that it creates an artificial light source and then these shapes are reacting to that light source. By default, the light source is coming from the direction this little arrow is pointing in, or I should say the arrow is pointing to the source. So it's actually gonna be in the top left by default. So that's why this is pointing to the top left. And if I rotate this around, it's just going to rotate the light source to wherever the arrow is. So in this case, over here on the right side, that does change how this looks. And it also does help to sort of get rid of the gaps going on between the shapes here. Again, it doesn't totally get rid of it. And depending on the layer mode you use later, it might make it worse because in this case it makes them darker. But you can turn the light direction all the way down to zero or all the way up to 360 and see what looks best in terms of how it makes the gaps look if that is something that's important to you. But I'm gonna erase that number and type in 135. That was the original. That's gonna bring our light source back to the top left. And anti-aliasing is just going to smooth out all of the lines that are going on here. So if you uncheck that, it'll just make the lines look a bit more jagged. Random seed allows you to just randomly scramble the shapes here. So these shapes are just displayed in a random order. You can change that randomness by generating a new seed. So you can either sit here and manually increase this value or decrease the value. Each value is just gonna be a totally different random set of shapes. If you wanna go with a totally random seed, just click new seed. And here you can see this is a completely random seed. So GIMP just basically has like an infinite number of random seeds you can generate here. And you can play around with this until basically you get a look you like. So you can just continue hitting new seed until you see something you like. And one thing I wanna cover before I move on, the light color here, you can change the color of the light shining on the shapes. So by default, it's set to white. Let's say I wanted to go with orange. You can see what happens there. It's going to mostly just change the color of the gaps between the tiles here, but it also just changed the colors of the tiles themselves. I'm gonna change this back to white. I just think that looks better. So the next option here is for clipping. So the final generated tiles here or the final generated mosaic can be larger than the final image. So if you want this to basically be clipped to the original layer boundaries of your image, you could change this to clip and that'll just cut everything outside. Otherwise, if you set this to adjust, the layer size may change in size, sometimes it doesn't. And then finally, you have blending options. So this will blend the results here with the original layer. So it's not gonna blend it with the background layer below, it's going to blend it with this original blue. 
So if you do want to blend this layer, you can scroll through these with your mouse wheel and see the different effects. Because this is so slow, it can take some time sometimes. Uh, but for example, multiply is typically pretty good. So there you can see the result of that. And that does actually get rid of the gaps pretty well. But you can just scroll through all of the layer modes in here and just go with whatever you like ultimately. So there's another option there that's a bit more subtle. Let's come up top here to normal and we'll come over here and click OK. So that applies our low poly or our geometric background to the original layer we were working with. And now we can come up top here and scroll through the layer modes. This is much quicker. Uh, but because we're using a white background, there's not really a ton of effects going on with the geometric layer we have here. So what we can do is hide this temporarily and click on the background layer. And let's just change this. So I'll change the white background color here to this orange. You could copy my HTML notation there if you want. And I'll click OK. Hit the G key to grab the gradient tool. Let's just draw a gradient here. And I do have this set to foreground and background RGB. The shape I'll change to linear and that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to click on here and hit the enter key. So now let's unhide the geo layer and now we're going to get some different effects and let's make sure we're on the actual geo layer as we scroll through here. So starting back at the top, you can see as I scroll through, there are various effects created here depending on the layer mode I have selected. And as I mentioned, I like the way multiply looks here. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.